Welcome to another episode of 9 to 5 Mac Weekly, where Apple will only release a new product after I've already spent days working on a buyer's guide video for the year. I am your host, Miles Somerville. Let's dive right in and talk about this new MacBook Pro. So yes, just this morning, Apple did release the new 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro, and while yes, some upgrades have been made and they are improvements for sure, I am kind of disappointed with what they brought to the table overall, but let's dive right in and talk about everything that's new and improved. So we're gonna break this up into two parts. Firstly, we're gonna get into the two Thunderbolt 3 port version of the 13 inch, and then we're gonna talk about the four port Thunderbolt 3 version of the 13 inch. Firstly, the new 13 inch Pro has been updated to use the scissor switch keys. Uh, these will be featured on both versions of the 13 inch Pro, and this means that the butterfly switch keyboard is officially dead, rest in pieces, you will definitely not be missed. And just like the 16 inch Pro, the 13 inch Pro now uses a physical escape key again, which is good. But besides that, there technically isn't anything new with the two port version of the 13 inch Pro. The only difference is that you're now getting 256 gigabytes of storage to start for $1299 as opposed to 128. And this also officially means that 128 gigabyte Macs are officially dead. You're not gonna find it on the MacBooks, the Mac minis, the iMac, obviously not the Mac Pro. 128 gigabyte Macs are officially gone. But yeah, other than that, you're still getting the same internals generally speaking, you're getting the same DDR3 memory, 8th generation processors, and the same old integrated graphics. Now when it comes to the 4 port version of the 13 inch Pro, that's mainly where we're seeing the updates. Firstly, we've now got 10th generation Intel chips. Even though you've only got quad core options, you can now choose between a 2 gigahertz i5 or a 2.3 gigahertz i7 processor. And we don't have any hands on with these just yet, so we don't know exactly how much faster these are compared to the 2019 MacBook Pros as far as pure performance numbers, but I'm sure it's at least noticeable. Another pretty big change to come with the four port version of the 13 inch is the omission of an eight gigabyte memory option. So you can now only choose between 16 or 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory for the four port version of the 13 inch. Uh, and although I think it's kind of strange that they eliminated the eight gigabyte of RAM option for the four port version, I think it's cool that they included a 32 gig of RAM option because that's something that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long Long time and it'll definitely help uh, for multitasking and app performance generally speaking. You can now spec your 13 inch to come with up to four terabytes of storage which is something that photo editors and video editors like myself are really going to take advantage of and I think it's a no-brainer inclusion given that you can have up to eight on the 16 inch Pro. But I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the update. Uh, pricing hasn't changed for the baseline models of the two port or four port version of the 13 inch either. They're both still coming in at $12.99 and $17.99 respectively, which is definitely good to see. I, I wouldn't expect that they would charge a heck of a lot more for an update like this. Overall, I'm kind of eh on this 13 inch update. I mean, firstly, I'm kind of surprised that there was no design update to the chassis to match the 16 inch Pro. I mean, me personally, it's such a small device already. I don't really care if the bezels are you know, two millimeters thinner, it's kind of whatever, but I'm more concerned about the fact that there still isn't a dedicated graphics card option on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I mean, I'm not asking for, you know, a Vega 64 with 12 gigs of VRAM. I'm not asking for, you know, an Nvidia Titan. I'm not asking for, you know, a Quadro card that's like water cooled. All I want, just like a 5500M with four gigs of VRAM, maybe even a 580, I'll take a 570 in 2020 versus the integrated Intel graphics. Uh, and I'm not saying that this is, you know, a bad update or a bad machine whatsoever, but there are a lot of pro users like myself who would like to use something like the 13 inch for processes that require sometimes a lot more graphical power than what the integrated graphics can support. Uh, and it's not like, you know, Apple has some sort of engineering constraint where it's impossible to fit a dedicated graphics card into a 13 inch laptop. It just straight up isn't. I'm just curious as to why, why Apple continuously gimps the 13 inch in comparison to the 16. It almost makes me feel like the 13 inch isn't like the same level of pro as, you know, the 16 inch is. Obviously the 16 inch is bigger and thus can fit more hardware inside and better hardware inside. 
but even still, it's never felt like to me that the, the 13 inch and the 16 inch were at the same level. And I feel like to an extent, that's kind of the way it should be. I feel like generally speaking, the 13 inch should offer all of the same amenities that the 16 inch does just in a smaller package. Maybe we don't have to have the eight terabyte SSDs and the 64 gigs of VRAM, but at least a dedicated graphics card. I feel like that should be bare minimum for a pro machine in 2020. But hey, hopefully Apple updates the 13 inch again. Apparently there's supposed to be a mini LED 14 inch MacBook coming sometime this year, maybe next year. All of the coronavirus delays have kind of screwed everything up and that might be why we've gotten what we've gotten today. Uh, but either way, I, I really, I really just wish they would add a dedicated GPU. That's, that's kind of all I want at this point. If they would do that, the 13 inch Pro would be a near perfect laptop in my opinion. But that's the update, 1299 or $17.99 for the four port version. Definitely solid update and we'll have plenty of coverage on it here at 9to5Mac. Uh, and with that rant out of the way, let's hop into our desk flex for the week. So this week's desk flex comes from Nathan. He sent me this clip over on Instagram and I can already tell before playing it that he went above and beyond for this one. So let's check it out. Hey everyone, this is my submission to the 9 to 5 Mac Desk Flex, and here is my setup. As you can see, I like to keep things pretty minimal. Uh, as far as powering, this setup is a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It has the 2.8 gigahertz quad-core processor and then the Radeon Pro 560. For my peripherals, I have the Magic Mouse and Keyboard. And uh, always on my desk, I have my iPhone and my AirPods. I might not always have them set up like this, uh, but they are necessary next to my desk. For my monitor, I do like pixels. So I have a 27 inch 4K Philips monitor. It is budget, but it is IPS uh, and I do really enjoy it. I do work from home sometimes and when I do, my two boys love to help me out. Uh, although they do like to mess up my setup every once in a while. Um, you can see that best in my speakers. These are just a pretty cheap pair of speakers, 40 bucks, but they uh, punched in the tweeters, so that's why they look like that. I do have a wireless charger where I keep my phone and obviously it's always open to nine to five Mac. And on a built-in shelf on my desk is where I keep my MacBook. I have it available there if I need to plug in any hard drives or if I need to charge anything. And then right behind it, I have two eight terabyte hard drives that I like to keep all of my backup footage on. And yeah, that is my setup. Thank you so much for letting me feature it. Uh, this was a ton of fun. And I really hoped you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming and making this little video. All right, thanks for submitting, Nathan. Firstly, I just wanna thank you for taking the time to put, you know, extra work into the desk flex and, you know, whipping out your camera and tripod and actually, you know, editing, color correcting a fully fledged video. I definitely appreciate that. I think the audience does too. Nobody uh, is gonna complain about, you know, better quality, at least better than a smartphone. Overall, the desk setup is super clean. I honestly don't have any suggestions. I love the kind of atmosphere you've generally established for yourself with all the plants on the walls and on the side of the desk. Uh, I think the chairs honestly look really nice as well. The monitor, probably pretty solid for your use. Uh, and of course you can't go wrong with the standard Apple accessories as far as the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse. Overall the desk looks really nice and it's kind of inspiring me because I, I really want to update this desk to something new. Overall, it's just, it's just a super clean setup, man, honestly, and a really clean video overall. Thank you for submitting. Uh, I'll leave his Instagram in the description down below if you wanna check it out. And if you yourself wanna submit a Desk Flex video, just follow the instructions down in the description as well. In other news, it looks like the iMac may finally be getting a redesign. 
A new report from the China Times says that Apple's going to drop a 23-inch iMac later this year, alongside a new low-cost 11-inch iPad. We don't know much about either devices as far as specs, but the 23-inch iMac is supposed to be an update to the current 21.5-inch model and come with a redesign introducing smaller bezels and seemingly newer internals. The 11-inch iPad is slightly less of a mystery. We know that this iPad should be on the more budget side of things, yet come equipped with Touch ID under the display. Both devices should be going into production sometime in quarter three, and we should generally speaking have more info in the next few months or so. I think it's finally cool to see that the iMac is getting a redesign as we've generally speaking had the same design language on the iMac for like the past 10 years plus now. So to finally see a genuinely new design for the iMac should be pretty cool to see. As far as the 11 inch iPad, I think it's kind of interesting that they're going as far as throwing Touch ID under the display in a more budget-friendly model, but I guess we'll have to see how this compares to the rest of the iPads that are surely going to get updated probably sometime again in the next year. Maybe not the new Pros, but probably at least the iPad Air, maybe a new iPad Mini. We'll just have to see. In our last story, we've got a bit more insight on Apple's plans for their upcoming ARM-based Mac computers. According to Bloomberg, Apple's working on a range of CPUs designed for future Mac hardware. And the first one to be made is supposedly gonna be a five nanometer 12 core processor and be much more powerful than Apple's current A13 processor found in the SE, the iPhone 11, and 11 Pro. Now you might be wondering, if they switch to an ARM-based platform, how am I gonna run my daily apps? Well, apparently Apple's also looking into options for making the current Intel-supported Mac applications compatible with the ARM-based Mac CPUs as well. Uh, but we should generally speaking have more info on this in the coming months leading up to 2021. And this is honestly the most important factor for me, application support, because it would be a real and true shame for Apple to pull a Windows RT and drop this bland new platform, brand new platform uh, with a bunch of apps that you can't run on it. But I'm sure Apple will have a workaround for that and figure that out because that would practically make ARM-based Macs unusable on day one. If I can't throw Final Cut on my ARM-based Mac out of the box, then I don't want it. So that's pretty much it for this episode, and it kind of feels like, generally speaking, there might not be any new Macs for a while, which I'm kind of bummed out about because I always love new toys, but I think we're probably not going to see another new piece of Mac hardware for at least another couple of months. Uh, we're supposed to be getting new AirPods sometime this month, according to, you know, leaks and sources and stuff like that, but we'll just have to see. No concrete rumors as of yet. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.